Hey guys, today we're gonna unbox, build, and do our first prints on our Ender 3 Neo. So once you've unboxed it, this is what you're left with. Be very careful when you get to the gantry here. Uh, it is permanently connected to the base unit that's underneath it in the box. So you kind of have to lift this out, pull out the base unit and collectively bring both of them to the table. Uh, it's a little bit tricky, so just be, be cognizant of that. You don't want to be yanking on any of these cords too hard. Um, so we only have really two pieces to assemble, which is kind of standard. We've seen that on many printers. Um, and I'll just kind of cover what we got in the box before we get to building. So we've got our sample spool of filament, nicely vacuum sealed here. We've got all of our assembly tools and the micro USB stick here, which probably has some pre-sliced files. There's also some flush cutters in there as well. We've got our manual, which we'll absolutely read, and some sort of a warranty card of sorts. A scraper, which is sharpened. We have two pieces for the spool holder here. And of course, the screen. And then the power cord. So, first things first, in the assembly bag, we're going to need Allen keys, wrenches, and the long bolts that they have here. So there's four of them, there's gonna be two for each side. And slightly different from most printers that we've seen, um, it's actually gonna bolt through the side of the uprights uh, instead of bolting up underneath through this unit. Um, there's really, the side rails don't really overhang the, uh, the bed, you know, they're covered by the bed, so um, can't really bolt up through in that way. So laying this on top here, like so, so the uprights fit into those kind of milled notches on the side. Just be careful of all the, the wiring, make sure you're not pinching anything. And then we can bolt through that with these long screws. There's two holes in either upright. Just make sure you're not cross-threading them or anything. You may have to like slightly lift to, uh, to align the holes. There we go. And so then screw those in. So now that we've got the uprights connected to the base there, we're gonna work on the screen. So this cable here, it's got a little key on it and there's a little notch on the back side of here so you know it only goes one direction. Connect to that. And then on this bracket here, we have some T-nuts that are already screwed into. I'm just gonna loosen them so that they're freely spinning on the back side there. And then you can, you can kind of spin them to try to line them up with these grooves here. So make sure that they're all like horizontal. You can also spin them um, by spinning the, the screws, uh, but they should slide in like that. And then just reach underneath and quickly twist them. Hopefully they turn in the channels there and tighten them down. The back two screws, at least, you can kind of look on an angle through the slot to see that they've twisted inside that slot to make sure they've both kind of fully engaged. And so that's right there. Let's take protective film off. And then for the spool holder, uh, just take a look here. So on the back side over here, it's just gonna kind of click in. Uh, and this is the part that the spool rides on. So just kind of a quarter turn there. So the idea is that, oops, that this is going to go on the top rail there and then just press it down and it should kind of lock in. There we go, like that. And there's a little bumper on here so it sits on the table to support it. Slide that all the way to the back. There we go. And then we have a couple more cables here to connect. Yeah, this does have a hinge so it can kind of like move out of the way almost. Um, so on the back side, we have this cable. It's probably labeled Z, yep, Z1. So this is our Z motor, connect him. We've got this bundle of cables that's handling all this stuff that's already pre-connected for us. So we don't have to worry. Um, we have this cable here, which is for the bed. Just make sure there's plenty of slack on that so we don't have to worry. Then on this side, we have the other Z motor, connect that one. And I can also take off the protective film here. 
So they did include their kind of textured glass build surface on here. Um, and these little clips, the front clips rotate kind of out of the way like that. They're very hard on the fingers, that's for sure. There we go. So rotate those away and then the glass can slide forward out of the back clips. And that way you can remove the glass and slide it back in like that. I've also seen people use, you know, mirror or other materials as well. Whenever you're moving uh, axes manually, you should move them very slowly. Um, just, uh, you don't wanna induce any voltage backwards through the system. Um, but just moving this, I'm feeling that there's no binding or buckling in the, in the wheels. Uh, you know, there's no slop in the bed. Um, so I don't actually have to adjust the eccentric nuts on the wheels that are riding on the sides of this uh, 4040 rail here. On this 4040 rail, speaking of, we have our tension adjustment for the Y belt. We also have the tension adjustment for the X belt here. Um, they seem pretty good uh, from the factory, so I don't have to play with those. Um, and at this point, I think we're just about ready to, uh, to turn it on. Um, on the hot end here, just taking a look, so we've got our fan shroud for our part cooling fan that comes in from the side. We've got a, um, a probe here, like a BL Touch style probe for automatic bed leveling. Um, and of course, this is a uh, Bowden fed system. So you've got your extruder gear mechanism on the top side of the X rail. So the power cord plugs in here behind the screen, right behind this upright. And there's the power switch on that inlet. So click that. And in just a minute, the screen should turn on. Um, in the front here, I should have mentioned this earlier, we have a little drawer to store all of our tools and everything. Um, so when I'm done, I'll load that drawer up. So the screen's up, we can see the bed is 24, the hot end's 24, um, and I just wanna test the axes. So if I prepare and say auto home, so it's home the X, there we go, and the Y, and then it should bring it kind of to the center and the probe deploys, and then it's just gonna touch the bed there. While that's going down, we're still gonna to wanna to do our corner leveling like we normally do. Um, so we will home all the axes, which is what we're doing here. Um, and then we'll do uh, the manual bed leveling at the corners and then kind of rehome the axes. I'm gonna assume that from the factory, the Z offset for the probe is already set. Um, if it's not set correctly, when it thinks it's at zero, if we put the Z all the way down uh, and we do slide a piece of paper under there, there will be an improper gap um, if that offset is not set correctly. Um, so that's a pretty, pretty quick test. Okay, so it's now homed itself. Um, and if we go to, um, to move, and we move the Z, right now Z's at 10 millimeters. If we bring it down, I'm just going to put paper underneath here. Bring it down to zero. And there is not even remotely any drag. So right now, Z is at zero, supposedly, but it's actually like two or three millimeters off the build surface right now. So we're gonna have to set the Z offset. If we go to, uh, it's gonna be under prepare, yeah, and Z offset, and we can make it further negative. And as we make it further negative, it's actually moving the hot end down and narrowing that gap. So somewhere around there is anyway a little more sane. So we're at minus 2.44 millimeters or so. And what that means is when the probe hits the bed, the nozzle is still 2.4 millimeters above the bed. So it says even though it's hit the bed, you need to move down 2.4 more millimeters before the nozzle is in the right location. Now, I just set that roughly because everything's cold right now. We'd want to do that, much like our bed leveling, we want to do that when things are at temperature. So let's warm this up and we'll do preheat PLA. And so that's going to set the hot end to 200 and the bed to 60. Okay, I'm jumping the gun a little bit. The bed is at 59 degrees. Um, the hot end is at 163. Um, and I can feel that the amount of drag has actually changed already. Um, so if I go back to the Z offset and bring this further negative, So I've got kind of 
that much drag, if that makes sense. So I'm at minus 2.48 in my case. So if we go back to the main menu and go to leveling, it's actually gonna do the automatic bed leveling, you know, the five by five or so probing of points. Um, but we wanna just make sure our corners are sane first. Um, so just in case you haven't, um, do a home auto home or home all axes, let that finish. Then we're gonna bring the Z down to zero in the center, just like we did, um, and move the Z to each corner and check each corner with our leveling paper. Um, get those corners all balanced out, check the center again, and then at that point, we'll do the auto uh, bed leveling to make a whole topographical map of, of the surface there. So let's go to move. We'll bring the Z down, as I said. Okay. And just gonna adjust my Z offset because it feels a little bit tight. Okay, minus 2.4 feels good. Okay, so now I'm just gonna move the Z up just to make sure I don't scratch the surface. And then I'll move it to the corners. So we just want to avoid um, where the clips are. And now I'll move the Z down. And again, just so I'm not scratching the build plate for the surface here, I raise the Z before I move it to the next location. So I've gone once around, you're probably best served to go a second time around and just double check. Cause you know, as I'm making adjustments to these other three corners here, I am impacting that corner there as well. So now that we've leveled all the corners and uh, checked our Z offset, we can go to the main menu and go to leveling and now it will actually probe the surface of the bed for us. You can put G29 into your start G code to make sure that you do a bed leveling probe every time you print, um, or you can do a leveling, which will save the mesh and will reload the mesh on every print. Once that's done, uh, we're gonna throw in this uh, micro SD card here into the front over here. Yep, into the front over here, uh, and we're gonna print the pre-sliced files. So in front of me, I have two test prints from our Ender 3 Neo. Uh, we also printed the factory file and then it went missing. But once we were convinced that the factory file printed fine, we moved on to slicing our own. We used Prusa Slicer and loaded the default profile for the Ender 3 Neo. Um, and used those settings and just modified the temperature to 200, I think, for our value PLA, which is shown here in silver. Um, so this print here is a drawbridge. I believe this piece kind of like raises and the drawbridge can raise as well. Um, so clearances are very good. Everything moves as expected. So that's good, kind of quick test of tolerances. And there's no print defects at all to speak of in this print. So very happy with that one. This here is kind of a, a planetary gear setup. It's printed in place, of course, and from a clearance perspective, everything spins as, as expected. So again, good tolerances are good. No print defects to speak of. Um, on this one, you will see a little bit of kind of pock marks or zits. Um, instead of lining up the Z seam all in one zipper in a line, they're kind of spread out throughout the prints. You will see tiny little dimples where that retract happens at the end of the layers. Um, but uh, I'm not complaining at all. So hopefully you found that useful and enjoy your new Ender 3. Remember, like and subscribe and ring that bell to get notified when we upload more content. Thanks for watching.